guys, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. You loved our next guest is Anna in Anna and the Apocalypse. And now you can see Ella Hunt in the new film, Summer Night. Let's take a look. And I got an announcement to make. I'm going to go on an adventure to find myself. And I'm going to find myself. I'm going to go off on an adventure. I heard you the first time, Andy. Yeah! Oh, hello, Vanessa. <laughs> Have you seen Seth? You know, I just saw him a second ago. Hey, I'll see you later, right? What's later? Taylor, what happened to you? A couple tweakers jumped me on the bike path. My band's playing the Alamo tonight. You should come. Cool. Can I just see you at the show? Just tell me what's going on. I met a guy. You know what makes me feel better? Yeah! That's it. I'm getting margarita stuff. You're going out tonight? I'm going to the show. I didn't know Taylor was back. I've got to change. Let's party! Come on, is this being alive, Jameson? Hi, I'm Harmony. Never get your heart broken? <laughs> you coming on hot, Maverick? Is this like all you guys do? Sit around and talk about bands nobody cares about. That's why I like you, Jameson. You're not like those guys. I'm right here. Titties! <laughs> I gotta get out of here before I end up holding the wall. This was not the plan. Stop beating yourself up. You didn't do anything wrong. I don't want to get involved and then find out that you guys have history and that you're still into him. You have all these plans and dreams for your life and none of them include hanging around your deadbeat friends and drinking beer. But Corin, I'm alive and I don't think it gets any better than this. Still you still I wish we'd met this later. Please welcome Ella Han. Let's hear it. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, congrats on Summer Night. Uh, I thought this movie was adorable. I thought it was so cute. It, it's a movie we don't see that much of anymore. It reminded me of like Can't Hardly Wait or a lot of the sort of great teen films of the 90s that all Thanks. took place over the course of one wild, rambunctious evening. Yeah, a bit like Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Or a, a bit like off. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, yes, <laughs> like that. How did you get involved? I um, I got sent a straight to offer thing where I just got sent the script and Joe had seen, had seen a tape I'd done for something else, I think, and, and had thought I was right for it and I read the script and thought it was utterly lovely. And also, it's my first American movie, so I was really excited to be offered, offered Your part first American America. movie? Yeah. Wow. And first movie in, a, in an American accent as well. How did that feel? I love doing an American accent. How do you, uh, <laughs> how, how do you distinguish, like, how do you find the American accent? Because Americans, we have no idea. You have no idea about accents. It's hilarious. And since I've moved to New York, I find it so charming. I have so many Americans come up to me and try and do their English accents for me, which range from really diabolical to truly awful, right. <laughs> with nothing in between. Um, I find I grew up watching Disney. So uh, from a really young age, was imitating Hannah Montana. And you guys- so You're mainly just doing a Miley Cyrus impression? I, that's definitely where it began. <laughs> but you it's guys a like, very specific American. I it's it's kind of broadened out since then. Um, but yeah, you you kind of push everything to the back of your throat when you're being an American. So it's 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 really funny the tricks. That's interesting, right? Yeah. Like because now that you pointed out, I always feel that I'm talking for the most part from the back of my throat. Yeah, you're talking from like back here. Yeah. And it's hard to sing that way because you're supposed to sort of center yourself and sing from your diaphragm, right? Yeah, yes, yes. I, uh, I had a singing teacher when I was about 13 who, who I hadn't worked with before and I, and I came in and, and sang, I think, a Christina Aguilera song for her. I was obsessed with the I'm Beautiful song. I can't remember what the 
I am beautiful in every single way, that right. one. Um, the one they ruined in Mean Girls. Um, and, and I sang it for her and she was like, you're singing like an American. Because every song I'd, I'd listened to as a kid was by an American singer mostly. And so I was imitating the singers. So what that meant was, I mean, because that, that can't mean that Christina Aguilera sings from back here. I mean, oh no, no, like no, not at all. Singer. I was just like imitating the vowels, and she was like, "You have to learn how to sing like you," um, oh. which took a bit of time. Which I mean is interesting. You are recording music right now, right? Yeah, I'm a singer songwriter, and I'm making my first album at the moment. How long have you been writing songs? I've been writing since I was really young. It was my. It is still the way I express everything I'm going through, it's my main creative outlet. And it's a lovely thing to do either side of acting because with acting, you're waiting for jobs to come in and I love script reading, but often, often you're auditioning for things that you don't get. Right. And music is something that I can do constantly. It's, it's, I'm, it's always there for me. Right, you have no control over acting in a lot of ways, right? Like yeah. Whether Zero you get control. to part, you don't have much control. And even when you're on set and doing the performance, yeah. you don't have that much control over it. You don't it. have control over the finished product. And it's been really fun making an album and getting to be completely creatively immersed in the entire process from the art for it to to the sound to yeah to everything it's really fun so when you go into the studio so first day in the studio how many songs did you have written or how many did you plan to record i i had a huge back catalog of songs that i'd written throughout my teen years which ranged from like bolshy teenage girl songs to to songs that i'd written more recently and it's been really fun kind of picking songs from throughout my teenage years. Uh, so now there's about 13 songs. Is that because like uh, those songs that you wrote when you were a teenager, which it sounds like you have a light embarrassment over, they still in some ways may have had something that just needed a little bit of uh, yeah. tweaking and they can sort of be a more adult song? Yeah, they've, there's, there's been some tweaking. There's been some that have stayed exactly as they were because because they felt right. And then there are others which were like, I saw you making out with her the other day. I just smiled and looked the other way um, that haven't stayed on there. Based on reality or just generally Absolutely how Absolutely based like, on reality. Oh, really? Because <laughs> when I was a teenager, I wrote stuff and I always found like looking back and I was like, you were not experiencing any of this pain. You just thought that pain was meant, was like a serious thing that you should write about. Oh, whereas I think teenagedom is, is a place where we experience our emotions very deeply. Mm. And I'm excited to be seeing more TV shows and films depicting that. Like, I've been watching Euphoria recently, and that's, I, I feel like that's grasping the gravitas of what it feels like to be a teenager. I think everything feels very heavy because you're experiencing often these things for the first time. Um, and your, emo your, your hormones are running wild. So, yeah, to me... So then that means you have a great back catalog of songs <laughs> from, that, from that period of time. They're so heavy. <laughs> Uh, tell me about uh, your character in Summer Night. So I play Dana, who is a young woman studying. She's about to go off to university. When we meet her, she's reading Rilke by, the, by, by a river. And Callan McAuliffe's character, Taylor, stumbles out of the woods, covered in cuts and bruises, and is like, I'm going to take a lie down. And I'm like, we're going to get you some Band-Aids. And that's our meet cute. And we end up spending the evening together. This movie is uh, its one night in the life of many uh, romances, failed yeah. and beginning, mostly success. It seems like successful romances in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think it's it's following a group of young people, trying to j just trying to work out their place in their world with or without their partners. Um, and it, I think it looks at what it is to be an aspirational young person in a small town and and coming to grips with reality as well. All of which are in good bands too. Yeah, That's the kind band of what is I was so surprised good. by. I was kind of like, I don't know if all these kids would be in great bands. <laughs> yeah, we did we were very lucky to have fantastic indie yeah. musicians. I mean, it makes all the, the music band. wonderful in the movie. Uh, that's what you need, you know? You need a killer soundtrack. 
um, what was your favorite of the bands that, that, that playing there on set and is in the movie? Oh, gosh. The first band that plays, now I've forgotten what their name is, but but the lead singer, the girl, she just, her voice is like like cinnamon. It makes me so happy. You're probably too young to remember them, but it reminds me of the Cardigans. I don't know if you know that that band. From Apart the from the, the like jumper that you wear, I'm, I'm sorry. Aging myself. <laughs> Love doing that. Uh, so you said it was your first American movie. Were you nervous at all shooting, going to shoot in America and shooting as a plane an American? I was certainly nervous to travel across the pond and, and shoot in Georgia, having never really shot further than Europe. And so that, so that was a big step. Um, but playing American was something I'd been visualizing doing for a while at that point. And our director, Joseph Cross, is an actor and it's his first, it's his directorial debut so he made all of us feel incredibly comfortable mm. when did you start acting i started acting when i was 11. how i was spotted in a school production of the mikado uh playing <laughs> the mikado in an 11 for 11 year olds yeah yeah i don't know what our teacher was thinking but yes it was the mikado for 11 year olds and i was playing a, I was wearing a fat suit and a kimono and a wig, and um, my oh, agent, you spotted? my agent who I'm still with today, his son was playing opposite me, so he was in the audience and saw me and said that I should act. Now, when you were in the Mikado, was there any part of you that loved acting or wanted to do acting, or were you just kind of like in a play in a play because you were 11? I was obsessed. You were, oh, okay. My mother was an actress, and and I had been from a pretty young age begging for an agent. My mum kept saying, you know, when the time is right, an agent will find you if, if you want to do it. But um, she was imagining that I'd be 18 or 21. Not 11. Not 11. Right. Yeah. And did you start auditioning sort of th for things right away? Yeah, I did, but it was very specific, just just parts in films and TV things. My parents didn't want me being a Disney kid, um, even though I was obsessed with Disney. Uh, they just wanted me to get to grips with the industry and, and, and enjoy all the parts of the process. So enjoy getting sent scripts and... and meeting casting directors and not really needing to experience further than that straight away, which I'm so grateful for now. Right, you get the Disney kid thing and there are no grips. You can kind of... Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to acclimatize. Everything is built around you yeah. and you're 14 or which 13 years old. I absolutely didn't have. I grew up in the countryside in the middle of nowhere, um, spent a lot of time with my dogs, spent a lot of time bored. Um, writing songs. Writing songs, yeah. And that's what you did for, for in your spare time for fun was write songs? Yeah, yeah, Amazing. it was. But it was also just like out of a need to express. Um, that's, that's where songwriting came for me. What would you say, what was it like when you got Anna in the Apocalypse where you're playing the titular character? That was, that was quite a big next step. I'd been doing a TV show called Cold Feet, which was a popular British TV show, and I'd been playing the daughter of the lead part. So I'd been kind of getting to grips with, with what it was like to be on set. But Anna was a massive big step up. And also, just before I shot Anna in the Apocalypse, I shot a film called The More You Ignore Me, mm. which I was also playing the lead in. And that was playing a girl who was struggling to connect with her mentally ill mother. So pretty heavy material. And then I was going straight on to Anna, which was a super physical job, having never played the lead in a film before. Actually, that's not true. I had done a film called Robot Overlords when I was 15 that I had done with Callan. Oh, wow. And he plays my love interest in that as well. I actually had my first on-screen kiss with Callan when I was 15. And uh, he was playing dead at the time. <laughs> So my first on-screen kiss was with a corpse, essentially. With his corpse. With his, with his corpse. So it's very funny to come back round to shooting with him and playing love interests again in Summer Night. And now you are in an upcoming show as well, right? Uh, yes. Dickinson. Yes. About uh, Emily, a sort of fictional interpretation of Emily Dickinson. Yeah, it's looking at Emily Dickinson as a young, rebellious poet in the 1850s. And Haley Steinfeld is playing Emily. Who do you play? I'm playing her closest confidant, Sue Gilbert. Uh, it's for Apple TV, right? Yes. Um, what, has, what, ha what was it like shooting that show and, and working on it? A total thrill, because I got to move to New York. Uh, and we were in corsets the whole time, which was crazy. Where did you shoot in New York? 
We shot at Steiner Studios. Oh, okay. Um, so it was crazy. They built the hu like huge Dickinson mansion in a studio. Wow. Yeah, it was amazing. And I'd never done a, sh a job in studio before. Um, and there's not much I can say about it at this point, but oh, it was a total keep thrill. Up. Yeah, I've got to keep mum. Okay. Uh, well, we actually have a tweet coming in, a uh, question from Twitter. Uh, it is, hi, how is working on this project different from others you've worked on in the past? Oh, thank you, questioner. Kiki. Kiki? At Kiki Cat. XOXO. <laughs> XOXO. Hi, Kiki. Um, this project was good fun. I had... I'd never done a rom-com before, so it was much more lightweight. I got to... I got to sit back and enjoy being as opposed to having to create a heavy character. It was more about relaxing and enjoying the people I was around. And also, we have a fantastic cast of young actors involved in this film. And we were all together for five weeks in Noonan, Georgia, with nothing to do apart from act and hang out. So it was, we did a lot of hanging out, which, yeah, I had fun. Uh, a couple questions from the audience. Who's the question? Hi. Uh, so you've got two careers kind of blossoming next to each other in yeah. music and acting. I was wondering if the process has ever played into each other. Yeah, I think they do. More often in reading scripts often is a catalyst for writing music. Sometimes I'll read something and immediately feel like I want to write about it. Um, but I've been involved in a couple of musicals already, and I would love to do more, like Anna and the Apocalypse is a musical, and I loved getting to fulfill that dream, like having grown up watching Disney and watching Hannah Montana, like the first thing I wanted to do was sing down a hallway, and I got to do that on Anna and the Apocalypse. So it's, it's really fun being allowed to do both. Uh, one more. Hi. Um, I also grew up watching Hannah Montana, but I also grew up watching Victoria. So I was wondering if there was any, if you did as well. And if yes, was, you know. I absolutely did. Victoria is a wonderful person. There was a funny thing. We were both, we were all staying in the same hotel. And I came downstairs one evening and was waiting for an Uber. To, I was going into Atlanta for something. And um, this lady sits down opposite, opposite me and is like, Hi, how are you? Are you enjoying your stay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm having a really nice time, thank you. And she's like, my kids are just outside. I'm going to bring them in. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Uh, do I know you? And she's like, I'm the hotel manager, silly. And she goes and gets her kids, and she's like, Victoria, will you sign my kids? Or, or like, sign something for my kids? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I am not Victoria. Victoria is somewhere else. But yes, Victoria is glorious, and she's awesome in the film. And yeah, I did have to swallow a bit of excitement when I, when I met her for the first time. Do you have to do that a lot, do you find? Do I get starstruck Yeah, do you get starstruck at all? I, I've gotten better at it. The first person I met who I was super starstruck around was Gemma Arterton. I was 13, I was in a hair salon with my mum and she was getting her hair done and I was just like sat learning lines for something. And Gemma Arterton was sat there getting her hair done and I was shaking because I'd just seen her in Centrinians. Um, and that's, that's the time I most remember being like consciously shaking in someone's presence. I think I have gotten a little bit better at it. I think. I think so. I think you're doing all right. Thank you. I don't think you'd be asked back to sets if you if you weren't good at it. <laughs> I hope. I hope so. <laughs> uh, the movie's called Summer Night. It's uh, available now. People yeah. can check it out uh, wherever people check out movies. And your album is hopefully coming out soon. Soon. And uh, I believe Dickinson is going to be coming out soon. Yeah, sometime this fall. Sometime this fall. Ella Hunt, everybody, let's hear it. Thank you.